This is the time split effect. So today I'm showing you how to pull off the time split effect in After Effects, but you can recreate it in Premiere Pro or any other editing software. It all really comes down to shooting at the right frame rate and using some creative masking. If you're working in Premiere, you may still need to dynamic link into After Effects for rotoscoping depending on your footage later on. But to get started, we'll first need to set our camera shutter speed and frame rate. Because we need the ball in slow motion, we're going to film the entire thing at either 60 frames per second or higher. If your camera allows for it, I'd honestly recommend shooting at 120 frames per second for the best results. Now, if you don't have access to 60 frames or higher, we can use AI tools like Runway or Topaz AI to fake the slow motion effect. Some editors worry that AI is replacing us, but in this case, it's just unlocking shots we couldn't pull off otherwise for a fraction of the cost. Now, when framing your shot, make sure to shoot on a tripod as even the most subtle change in the framing will ruin that final illusion. Another thing to keep in mind before shooting is you wanna frame the shot so the ball doesn't leave the top of the frame at all, because I think that would also kill the illusion. Lastly, make sure to film a clean plate with no subject in frame as we'll need it later on as well. So now go ahead and shoot your raw footage as many times as you need. I did it a bunch for safety to avoid having to reshoot at a later date. Now let's fire up After Effects to bring it all to life. But quickly, let me put you onto some game. You can 10X your editing speed with this one plugin. Brevity lets you add viral style captions instantly and gives you access to millions of stock assets and animations, all without ever leaving Premiere Pro. No more browser hopping, just faster edits all in one place. Try it free at brevity.pro. Now in After Effects, we have our raw clip of us shooting the basketball in our composition. And what I'm gonna do is just place the clean plate clip underneath it for now. Next, duplicate the top basketball layer. And at the moment the ball leaves our hands, we'll split that layer and slow down the second half of the footage as much as possible. Now create a mask around the subject with the pen tool like this and invert it. This is essentially splitting the clip in half so the ball is in slow motion and the player is in regular speed, hence the name time split. Since the framing is the exact same, the two clips mask together perfectly. You'll probably need to keyframe the mask position here slightly as well so the subject doesn't get cut off as it moves around. Now you should have the majority of the effect done but you'll probably notice that the regular speed ball is still showing coming through the net here. So now take that clean plate layer from the bottom and bring it above the bottom basketball footage layer. Duplicate that bottom layer once more and put that right above the clean plate. Double click it and then use the roto brush tool to isolate the subject from the background. Since the ball in the raw footage falls behind the subject here, I'll also need to rotoscope out the subject and use it as a cover over the clean plate so we don't see that regular speed ball. Now, I could have avoided this entirely by framing the shot so the ball didn't fall behind me, but thankfully, we've got After Effects for rotoscoping mistakes like that. Now, if you're in Premiere Pro, this is where you'd want to dynamic link to After Effects to separate the subject from the background, because that would be an even bigger nightmare in Premiere. But again, you can avoid this entirely with better framing. Now, if we play it back, the effect is 95% there. Lastly, just go to the moment before the slow-mo basketball gets cut off by our subject mask, duplicate the layer, add a freeze frame to it, and now create a mask around it to isolate it from the background. Now, just using position and rotation keyframes, we can animate the ball to continue on its path and not be cut off by the mask. Just make sure to enable motion blur for the ball layer. Now, obviously adding some sound design and nice color grading helps a ton, but I'll save that for another tutorial. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you were editing this shot, would you have done anything differently? I'm genuinely curious, so let me know in the comments because I always love hearing other editors' approaches to things like this. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.